The score system has been a part of the music and sound design platform since our initial 1.0 launch. However, because of a lack of available documentation, and with its sparse and intimidating design, it's been one of the most underrepresented parts of the software so far. With the recent 1.1 update, the score player has received a major overhaul, and the system is ready to receive its proper share of attention. Before continuing, I'd like to mention that working with scores requires a basic understanding of how automation functions in Music SDP. It's highly recommended that anyone watching this video should be familiar with the first automation tutorial video before continuing. The score system is, to put it concisely, the ultimate controller for Music STP projects. With the score player and with the three primary scores, you can create automation much like you can with our other built-in systems, but with significantly greater control. The best way to understand what makes scores so powerful is to see the system in action. The score player can be accessed from two locations. The menu bar contains a score menu, where the second option, View Score Player, will open the score player window. Alternately, the score player button on the system board can also be used to access the same screen. Before becoming familiar with the score player window, we need to understand how scores work and how scores can be built by Music SDP users like yourself. To open the main score, navigate to the System Score section and select View Score, or in the Scores menu on the menu bar, select View System Score. What are scores? Put concisely, scores are user-made sets of events consisting of one or more automation messages that can be triggered to create changes across your projects. Let's tear that sentence apart a bit. Automation messages, as covered in previous videos, are commands that control the various parameters in your modules and around the program. Events are collections of automation messages that are sent out together to any part or parts of your project. The triggering of events can be controlled by the performer or through automated systems like the metronome. Events can be triggered in or out of sequence, and may be triggered as many times as needed. Scores may look intimidating with their quasi-programming language appearance, but they're much easier to wrap your head around than even the simplest of command line languages. We'll spend the rest of this video breaking down the process of constructing scores, and we'll start by looking at how to build automation messages. We've covered the creation of automation messages in other parts of Music STP in previous videos. Building automation messages in scores works a little bit differently than in our other systems. In scores, automation messages will be crafted as single lines of code designed to change the parameters of a single module or a single system on the system board. The first word of each automation message should always be the automation ID of the module or system you want to control. For example, if we want to control this first module, which I've named Echo1, we'll want our message to read like this, Echo1, space, parameter number, space, parameter value, etc. You can only choose one ID per automation message. After the ID, at the beginning of the line, we can decide which parameters we want to change and how we want to change them. Remember that each module is controlled by parameters that can be changed by turning a knob, setting a value, choosing an item from a menu, or in a few other ways. In scores, we automate this control by creating parameter commands. Parameter commands consist of two parts. The first part is the parameter number, the second part is the value or values for the specified parameter. Let's look at the first example line again. After the word echo1, I placed the word p1. We tell the system what parameter to change by writing p followed by the number of the parameter. In other words, if we want to change the input of the echo1 module, we state this by writing p1 for parameter 1. In the same way, changing the output would start with p2, and changing the volume would start with p3. There are several different types of parameter interfaces in Music SDP, and each is controlled in its own way. For a complete look at how to control different parameter types, refer to the score tutorial accessible from the score player window. For this video, we'll look at just a couple of common examples. Knobs, sliders, and number boxes are particularly fun to automate, as you can watch them gliding from one position to another. To set these in motion, first, as always, we choose a parameter. Let's use volume as our example parameter. In our echo effect, as in most modules, volume is parameter 3. To start, I'll set the parameter to an initial value. Let's build an automation message now to try this out. I'll type echo1 space p3 space 0 semicolon. Any and every line created in a score must end with a semicolon. This tells the system that your message is complete and prepares the system to read the next line as a new message. I can't emphasize enough how important this notion is. Remember your semicolon. It's the period at the end of your programming sentence. If I trigger this message in the score player, we can see our echo module's volume move instantly to zero. 
For this video, all events and messages will be triggered manually by pressing the next event button in the score player. To move back to the beginning of the score, I'll hit reset score, which will allow me to trigger the messages again. This is just one method of controlling scores, and we'll dive into control further in the next tutorial video. For now, we'll continue our focus on learning how to write scores. Volume is a knob, and all knobs, sliders, and number boxes can be set to move between two states. After a starting state is chosen for our knob value, we can send it to a new location by creating a message with both a destination value and a ramp time. The destination value, as in the previous example, is the number you want the knob to move to. The ramp time is how long, in milliseconds, it will take to get there. Remember that 1 second equals 1000 milliseconds. I'll type in another example message so that we can test this out. I'll type echo 1 p3 1.3 10,000 semicolon. Now I'll trigger that message. We just set the volume knob on echo 1 to move to a value of 1.3 over 10,000 milliseconds, or 10 seconds of time. Note that the knob will start moving from whatever last position we set with automation. In a bit, we'll look at how to make messages with multiple parameter settings. This will make it possible to set and move the volume all in one message. File players, MIDI players, and plugin effects. Let's take the time now to look at one of the more unique control tools available to us through the score system, the ability to automate the loading of files. Several modules provide the ability to load files from your project folder. The system score can be used to load files directly into any of these modules as long as the file already exists in your project folder. Any file that's been added via the audio file manager, the MIDI file manager, or the plugin manager will already be in the right place, although files may also be added manually. Adding and working with files has already been covered in other tutorials, so we won't retread that topic here. In the score, loading a file is as simple as adding the name of the file to the proper parameter. In most modules that use files, this is parameter 1, but you'll want to check for each module you plan on using. Let's make a message now to try this out. I'll type in filePlay1 p1 test audio.wave semicolon. Now let's trigger that message. Upon triggering the message, Test audio.wave is loaded into the audio file player with the ID FilePlay1. This is a great way of quickly swapping files in and out mid-performance without having to navigate to the audio module. All of the demonstration messages so far in this video have contained a single parameter command. One thing that makes scores so powerful and unique is the ability to combine multiple parameter commands onto a single automation message. This is done simply by adding a comma at the end of each command, before beginning a new one. I'll demonstrate this by creating a message with multiple commands in one line. I'll type echo1 p3 0 comma p1 mic 2 comma p4 0 comma p4 10,000 5,000 comma p3 1.3 10,000 semicolon. This automation message contains five parameter commands, each separated by a comma. Notice that the semicolon is placed at the end of the automation message. The commands do not need to follow the parameter number order and are executed one at a time in order from left to right in the message. In this example, the first command sets the volume knob to zero immediately. The second command sets the input pair immediately. The third command sets the delay time to zero immediately. The fourth command moves the delay time to 10,000 milliseconds over 5,000 milliseconds. The fifth command moves the volume to 1.3 over 10,000 milliseconds. The semicolon, finally, states that the message is over. Events. An event is a collection of automation messages that will be triggered and sent out together. Remember that I said earlier that scores are constructed as a collection of events. These events can be triggered in order or in any sequence. Events may be triggered once or can be triggered multiple times as needed. An event consists of our collection of one or more automation messages with a special line called the event number at the end. The event number is a line consisting only of a number and a semicolon. The event number must come after the last automation message for the event, and the event number signifies to the system the end of the current event. Let's look at an example event that I've already built to demonstrate this. This event consists of four automation messages, two comments, and the event number zero at the end. Some of these automation messages use special IDs that control unique parts of the system. These IDs are covered in the included score tutorial and will be reviewed in the next video in the series. For now, let's discuss how this particular event will play out. Events are executed in sequence from top to bottom. 
As mentioned earlier, each automation message sends its parameter controls in sequence from left to right. So the first thing that happens in our example event is that the top comment is sent out. This doesn't do anything other than send the comment that I've written to the score player, but it also exists to help me remember what's happening in the score at this point. Next, the file play one automation message goes out. A file is loaded, outputs are set, and the volume knob is set. Following this, the echo one automation message goes out. The input is set, the outputs are set, the volume is set then moved, and the delay time is set then moved. Then, in sequence, the synth1, the msdp score, and the msdp comment commands are sent out. Finally, the event is finished, signaled by the bottom line displaying the event number 0. Let's try out this event. I'll reset the score, then I'll trigger the event by pressing the next event button. Notice that a number of changes take place across our modules as well as in the score player as the automation messages that are a part of the current event go out. We should also quickly note that the current event number in the score player is now set to zero. For the final part of this tutorial, I'll copy and paste another event into our demonstration score so that we can see how the system navigates through multiple events. I've pasted the new event below the previous one. I've made this event shorter for the sake of the video, but you can see that I still have several automation messages. There is first a message for our file player, then a message for our echo module, and finally a message for our synthesizer. The second event ends with event number one. Event numbers should be kept in order in your score from first to last, top to bottom. Back in the score player, I'll hit reset score, then I'll hit the next event button. As expected, all of the messages in the first event are sent out across the project. The event number box also says zero, just as it did before. Now, when I hit next event again, our second event will occur, and all of the messages in the second event will be sent to their appropriate modules. Notice that the automation messages have been distributed, and that the current event number has now been updated in the score player to tell us that event one has been triggered. There's no limit to the length of a single event, and there's no limit to the number of events contained in a single score file. We'll end this tutorial here, but there is still a lot to cover in our discussion of the score system. The second video in this set will look at how to use the score player, and at all the ways we can control the scores that we've built.